Nah, I don't want to hear no damn thing about no Kenny Pickett. Pick his ass up and send him someplace. It wasn't always like this. A University of Pittsburgh quarterback legend who had just been drafted by the Pittsburgh Steelers to carry the torch from Big Ben and had fans calling him and George Pickens the new Montana to Rice. Yes! 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 But only a couple years later, the entire fan base despised him and he would be shipped off to the Philadelphia Eagles. From a first round pick to a potential third stringer in two and a half years, how did we get here? What happened to Kenny Pickett? And was he really that bad? This one's near and dear to my heart because, as some of you know, Burge is in fact a Steelers fan. Been one my whole life. And when the Steelers drafted Kenny Pickett, I thought he could be the second coming of John Elway. No, I didn't. No. No. But we'll get to that. Kenny Pickett was born in the Oakhurst section of Ocean Township, New Jersey. He attended Ocean Township High School and graduated in 2017. Pickett led the Ocean Township Spartans to the New Jersey Central Group 3 semifinal game as a junior, leading his team to a 92 record. 247 Sports ranked Pickett as the number 23 high school football player in New Jersey his senior year. During his high school career, he passed for 4,670 yards with 43 touchdowns and rushed for 873 yards with 17 touchdowns. He originally committed to play college football at Temple University, but he changed his commitment to the University of Pittsburgh. At least that's what his Wikipedia page says about him. I wasn't really too deep in the Kenny Pickett high school lore back then. Kenny Pickett arrived in Pitt in 2017, where he'd spend most of his true freshman season as a backup to Max Brown and Van De Nucci. He would get his first ever career start at the University of Pittsburgh, upsetting then number two Miami. Miami fans have invaded Pittsburgh, and why not? Only one he completed 18 of 29 passes for 193 yards with a touchdown and also shoot off some wheels, rushing for 60 yards and two touchdowns. Bypassing a field goal, and it's a boot for Pickett, the true freshman, heading to the end zone, at the Pala, touchdown! Pickett would then start the following year and never look back. His career stats at Pitt were 12,303 passing yards, 81 passing touchdowns, and 20 rushing touchdowns. In Pickett's final season, he was named a first-team All-American and was a finalist for the Heisman Trophy, finishing in third place. Pittsburgh won the ACC Championship that year and finished 11-2 in the games Pickett started, the school's best record since 1976. Personally, I was a little bit of a college football casual back then, still kind of am, so I didn't know much about Kenny until the viral fake slide he had in the ACC Championship game. And then Kenny Pickett declared for the NBA draft. NBA, what? And then Kenny Pickett declared for the NFL Draft, where you would think all the talk would be about how Kenny was so great last year, what team should draft him, his potential in the NFL, but instead, it was about his small hands. Is that a real photo, or is that one of those ones that, uh, that... No, that's, that's a real photo. I don't think so. No, that's real. That's interesting. <laughs> yep. Small hands. Lots of journals scrutinized Pickett prior to the draft for his relatively small hands. They measured at eight and a half inches, believing it could make him more prone to fumbling the football. And back then, I was a part of the Kenny Pickett big hands movement. Now looking back at it, he kind of did have small hands. Him wearing two gloves didn't really help his case either. It kind of actually proved their points about how small his hands were. Anyways, enough with the hands. Kenny Pickett was selected by the Pittsburgh Steelers in the first round of the 2022 NFL Draft. Kenny, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're about to make you a Pittsburgh Steeler, brother. Congratulations. <laughs> the highest the Steelers selected a quarterback since drafting Big Ben in 2004, who had just recently retired, so the door was wide open for Kenny to start and had a lot of the fans' hopes up. A Pittsburgh college kid that didn't even have to go to a new city when drafted. It felt like destiny, but it was anything but destiny. Some fans and media started to question the decision by the Steelers, saying they should have drafted Mike Willis, Thank God they didn't. How they only picked Kenny because they were desperate since Ben retired. And how Kenny wasn't really good anyways, he just played weaker competition in college. Kenny did not win the QB battle going into the season, losing to the MVP, Mitch Trubisky. Mitch didn't do so hot in his first couple starts. Trubisky? And Kenny finally got his chance in week four of the 2022 NFL season versus the New York Jets. Coming into the game at the start of the second half. A big roar of cheers from the crowd was to be heard because people really wanted to see what Kenny can do. Unfortunately, this game was the battle of the mid between Zach Wilson and Kenny Pickett. Throwing deep, has a man open. It is intercepted by Jordan Whitehead. Kenny's first career pass was a pick, but then Zach Wilson turned the ball over, so the Steelers got the ball back. And Kenny got his first rushing touchdown of his career on a QE sneak. Tight ends on Pickett, trying to sneak it, trying to get there. Touchdown. The crowd was ecstatic, and Kenny Pickett ended up getting the ball back again, marching down the field, and scoring his second rushing touchdown of the game. Steelers fans were getting what they saw out of Kenny at Pitt, and Steelers football had some life again. Throws this side of the field, and it is oh. picked off! Until it didn't. Kenny would end up throwing a pick with 3 minutes and 36 seconds left in the fourth quarter. Then Mid Wilson led a game-winning touchdown drive with 10 seconds left. Then Kenny threw a pick on a Hail Mary. He should have hit him with a shot clock cheese.
Everything sort of kind of was looking good until the fourth quarter. The Steelers fan base was sad again. Kenny would go on to have a really mid season that year, getting absolutely blown out in a couple games, and the offense really never looked like it was clicking. The Steelers were basically the definition of mid. Kind of notice I'm saying mid a lot, and I apologize for it, but if you were watching the Steelers back then, you would understand. The games they did win, though, were because of their defense, and the games they would lose, like I said, they would usually get blown out. Once November, December came around, the Steelers were somehow still fighting for a playoff spot, and they needed Kenny just to be above mid. Not even be good, just don't be too mid. That's all we. Wait. Wait, what is that noise in the back? What am I what am I hearing? Right now? What is that? Oh, can you see that? Can you see that? I didn't think you'd see this one. Chill, Kenny, please. Please, 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 Kenny, Kenny, please. Kenny, no. Kenny. Oh, y'all got me fucked up. Oh, my mama, y'all got me fucked up. When you talk about clutchest players of all time, you think of Tom Brady, you think of Joe Montana, you think of John Elway, maybe even Patrick Mahomes, but you also should think of November and December 2022, Kenny Pickett. The man was on a mission to get the Steelers in the playoffs. If the game was close in the fourth quarter, you might as well not even finish the game because you knew the Steelers were winning. That's how clutch this man was. The Steelers rattled off seven wins from November to the end of the season, with two of his clutchest games coming in week 16 and 17 versus the Raiders and Ravens. Many compare Kenny's clutchness to Steph Curry's shooting ability. Every time Steph took a three, you would think it's going in, and when Kenny tried it on the field in the fourth quarter with the game on the line well you knew the rest Steelers just barely missed the playoffs that year and they 100% would have beaten the Bills that year in the wildcard game but they never got the chance nonetheless the Steelers had their quarterback and fans had their sights set in the 2023 season with high hopes it was all up to Kenny Big Hands pick it now If you were to sit down and watch the 2023 preseason Steelers and then not watch a lick of the regular season, you'd have thought the Steelers won the Super Bowl that year. That's how good Kenny Pickett and the Steelers looked. But then reality set in when the Steelers hosted the 49ers week one and they didn't get a first down until a minute and a half left in the second quarter. Offensive lining, here we go, playing with tempo. On third down, Pickett evades one, can evade two. throw. Given time, lost one up top, intercepted by Mooney. It's picked up, giving Pickett time, but he missed fire. The Steelers were going to lose 30-7 to that game. And just like that, the Steelers were back to square one, where the offense looked very, very rough and had to rely on the defense to win a lot of their games, and even stay in the games. But it really hit its breaking point in Week 11 versus the Cleveland Browns, where Kenny Pickett just didn't look like an NFL quarterback. Second down at 10. Pickett's going to air it out, and there's nobody there. Missing reads left and right, literally throwing to nobody, and the Steelers fans had enough. What once had fans claiming Pickett to Pickens was the next Montana to Rice were now calling for Kenny's head. He got injured in Week 13 versus the Cardinals, and he would never see the field again as a Steeler. Having the chance to step back and be on the sidelines and see the game from a different perspective has it allowed you to see anything different, learn anything, and you know take some lessons from it? No. No. And then the Steelers packed up Kenny and sent him to Philly. Just two years ago, he was a promising rookie coming out of Pittsburgh University, and now he's fighting for the Eagles' second string spot. He did, though, have a winning record while he was under center for the Steelers, 14-11. and 11. All that man knew was how to win, even if he wasn't really the reason. 